In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to create this personalized typography where you have these rounded letters that intersect with each other in a unique way that creates a personalized look that doesn't look like it comes from a font. And if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I'll do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you need it. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And now that that's out of the way, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a new document. So I'm going to press Command N to open a new document. And the template I'm going to use over here is called QFHD. You can just type it into the search box up here. It gives us 3840 by 2160 pixels, which is a good size. We're going to want a really large canvas for what we're doing in this tutorial. And you can see over here, it shows you the size 3840 by 2160. You can also just type these numbers in manually if you can't find this template and then click Create. So once that's created, we're going to want the grid visible on the canvas. So I'm going to come up here to view and I'm going to enable where it says show grid. Click on that to enable it. And now we have a grid and now we want to edit this grid. So I'll come back up here to view and I will go to grid and axis. And in that menu, I'm going to choose the basic option. And the default is 64 pixels, but for this tutorial, we're going to use 50. So I'm going to type in 50 and press enter, and then I will close it. Now I'm going to zoom into 100% by pressing command one or control one. And we're going to turn on snapping by enabling this magnet icon up here. And then I will use this drop down. I want to make sure where it says snap to guides, we have that enabled for this tutorial. So go ahead and enable snap to guides and also snap to grid. We want that enabled. That's the most important thing right there. So snap to grid, close out of that once that's done. And now I'm going to create circles. I'm going to create an individual section of circles that we're going to use to construct all of the letters. So let me come over here to my circle tool and I'm going to snap to the intersection of two guides and I'm going to click and drag and then I'm going to hold shift and command or control and shift if you're on Windows to create this circle and bring it out about this far. It's about 300 by 300 pixels and once we created that I'm going to apply a stroke. I'll come up here to the stroke tab. I'll click on the solid line fill and I'm going to bring this out to about 25 I'd say 25 points. We'll come over here to the color tab. Let's click on this red slash to get rid of the gray fill. And now we have a single 25 point stroke there. So now I'm going to go back to my, let me go back to my circles tool. I'm going to snap to the same point in the center and I'm going to click and drag and hold command and shift again. And this time I'm going to create that same circle only one box larger than the previous circle, as you can see there. And, th and this is where the grid lines come in handy. It helps us snap to the next grid line. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to click and drag, hold command and shift, snap to the next grid line. And I'm going to keep doing this until I have five circles. And right there is four and one more will be five. There we go. So now let me grab my selection tool. Let me select all five of these circles and I'm going to convert them to curves. I'll just click on this button up here that says convert to curves. And then I'm going to grab my direct selection tool. It should be enabled by default after you hit that button. And I'm going to select all of these anchor points and I will come up here to where it says break curves and I'll click on that. And now we will have a series of individual curves and to see, to better show you how they look, I'm going to come over here to the opacity slider and bring this down in half. And now you can see where the start and end point of each and every single one of those individual lines is. And this is what we're going to need right here to construct each letter. So as you can see from my example design here, I spelled out the letter design. So I'm going to start off by creating a letter D. So I'll come back in here. I'm going to take these circles and let me move them to the top left corner. I'm going to create duplicates of these the whole time and use the duplicates to make the copies or to make the letters. Let me hold my option key or the alt key on Windows and click and drag these to create a copy. And I'll put this over here. This is where the letter D is going to be. And if you notice up here, I have these lines going straight up top. So I'm going to create lines in there to represent that part. So let me press the letter P on my keyboard to get the pen tool or you can access it over there as well. 
And, well, you know what? Let me grab my selection tool. I wanna to make sure I have these lines snapped exactly onto the grid as I need them. They want them to, you want them to be exactly on the grid lines because we're gonna use the pen to draw other lines and we need to use those grid lines as a reference. There we go. Now I'll press P to get back to my pen tool and I'll snap right here, bring this line straight up to here and snap right there and press, press escape twice to close the path and escape. And there you go, we have the one line drawn. And I'll do the same thing over here. Click again, bring this up here, press escape twice, there we go. And I'll just do the same thing until I have all five lines created. And there we go, now we have the letter D. Now if you notice, the intersecting lines here are still in the way. You don't have to worry about those right now. We're gonna go correct that uh, to, at the end when we're done creating all the letters. For now, let me grab my selection tool and let me select those lines and make them 50% opacity as well so I can so they match the rest of these letters. Now, if you notice, the way that I constructed this design, these letters intersect with each other so that we have this one fluid line that connects the two of them together. To simulate that effect, I'm gonna create the next letter, but instead of placing it next to the first letter, I'm gonna go one space in. So to create the letter E, let me create another copy of these lines up here. I'm gonna hold Option and click and drag to make a duplicate. And I'm gonna place these ones right here, right next to the original letter, but where they, I'm gonna make them overlap one step as you can see there. Okay, now I can click off of that. And to create the letter E over here, you can see I've done that. I'm gonna put lines at the bottom. So you could grab your pen tool and just draw those lines individually, or you could just grab these lines over here and just make duplicate copies of those. So I'm gonna press the option key and click and drag them to make duplicates. I'll rotate this around and I'll hold shift while I do that so that we get a nice horizontal rotation and I'll just snap these right here. And there we go. And now I'm going to create the letter S. So to create the letter S to construct that, let me go back in here. I'm going to grab just a section of these lines right here and I will hold option and click and drag. There we go. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this letter together over here first. And I'm gonna make a duplicate of these. I'm just gonna hold option and click and drag to make duplicates. And I will just hold shift and rotate these around. And then I can snap these together like that. And now we have a letter S. And I can take this and again, we want this to go one step in. We don't want this to go directly next to the letter. We want it to go one, we want it to overlap by one grid line. So let me put that there. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Or you know what, you could even put those in a little closer. If you notice, I have this overlapping a little more. So maybe we'll make this part of the letter overlap that first, that first grid line. There we go. And now I'm gonna take these lines just to clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna hold shift and click on all of these lines, grab the nodes tool and I will just bring these in. So let me just snap these over here and that's looking a lot better. Okay, so now I'm going to create the letter I. To do that, I will just make some duplicates of these lines over here. Again, holding Alt or Option, clicking and dragging to make duplicate copies. Place them right there. Grab your nodes tool, which is right here. A shortcut for that is the letter A on the keyboard. You can just press A and then bring these lines down so that they're the same height as the other letters. And that's done. And now I'm gonna create the letter G. So to do that, let me make a copy of these circles over here. Option, click and drag. And I'll place these ones, one section overlapping. There we go. And to create the letter G, if you notice over here, I have this part of the tail of the G going down like that. To do that, I'm just gonna make a copy of this quadrant right here. So I'll make a duplicate of this and I will snap these ones down here. Let me try that again. Let me select these. And I will snap this down here like that. And I will grab my pen tool. I'll just press the letter P on the keyboard and I will just snap these ends together like that. Again, press escape twice to exit, to close the path. There we go. And I'll just do these until I have five lines. And then I'll grab my selection tool and I will bring down the opacity of these as well so that they match the rest of the lines. And then I will make the letter N over here. So you can see we have a half circle up top and then we have some lines down here on the bottom. So let me simulate that effect. I'm just gonna grab these lines right here. I'm gonna duplicate them. 
and I want these overlapping just like the other letters. And then I could take these lines right here and I could duplicate them. I could hold Option, click and drag, there we go. And I could place them right there. And then just press A to get the Nodes tool, take these nodes and bring them down like that. And the guide, the guidelines come in really handy here. We're using the guides as a reference for most of this. It makes it a lot easier. Or the grid rather, not the guides. So let me take these and put these over here. For this one, we don't need all five of them. So let me delete the two on the left because we already have these straight lines over here. And, or you know what? Let me put one of those back. We do want this one right here. So let me get rid of that one. There we go. We do want this one. So if I come over here into my original design, you can see the letters overlap and underlap each other. So let me show you how to do that now. So let me come back in here. Let me select everything, all of these anyway, and I'm gonna bring the opacity up to 100%. And now to bring this all together, I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool. So if I come over here into the Shape Builder tool, it's located down here, you can also access it with the letter S. I'm gonna come up here to the Tool Settings menu and I'm gonna choose the Minus option. And if you zoom in, you can see, if you hover your cursor over the line, you can delete part of the line right there, just like that. Now make sure you're clicking on just the line. If you, if you click on the wrong thing, if you click on the entire line, you're gonna delete a whole section and you don't want that. So if you make a mistake like I just did right there, just press Command Z or Control Z to undo it and that'll fix everything. So I'm gonna delete this line and now you can see these two letters, uh, they kind of intertwine with each other. And now I can come over here and clean this up as well. So I'm gonna get rid of this segment right here making sure I'm clicking on just the line and not on anything else. You may think to want to draw a line going through them like this and that'll make it quicker, but then you end up with that right there, which is not what we're going for. So unfortunately, we're going to have to take the scenic route and click on these lines individually. And then over here, where the E and the S come together, if you notice, well, I actually have the letter ending right here. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. I made a mistake there, but I just want to make these letters. I want to make the E and the S come together right here first, and then I'll clean that up. So I'm going to start right here. If you notice, you can kind of visualize where it should be going. So you can just start in there like that by clicking on those lines. And there you go. That one part is done. Now we can just come down here and the rest of them should be a little easier now that it's you have a visual aid there. Okay, looking pretty good. And then I'll come over here with the letter I and G. I have them going that way. So let me start over here and go like this. Click on that part and then click on that part. If you notice, I have caps on the ends of these lines. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna come back into there and, and do that at the end. And also I wanna address this part right here where these two corners meet. I'm gonna show you that and I'm gonna show you that as well. So let me finish up what I'm doing here. I'll come over here and finish up on the letter G the letter G and the letter N. Let me delete those lines out of there. And then I have this one coming through here like this. So I'll delete those out of there one by one. And now we're looking pretty good. Okay, so let's come over here and finish up some other things. Let me grab my selection tool. I'm gonna grab my pen tool again. I'm gonna press P on the keyboard and I'm gonna snap right here to create a point and then I'll come over here to create another point so that we have a line right there. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab my pen again, create a line right there, a line right there, and we're gonna create lines going across for each of these five lines of the letter S. Oops, didn't mean that. There we go. Press escape twice to close the path. And then over here. Now let me go back into my selection tool. Let me select everything over here. And now I can go back to my shape builder tool and I can delete out these segments that I don't want. So delete that, delete that, delete that, and delete that. And that line that we created added a reference point. That pretty much just served as a reference point that we can use to delete out the unwanted areas. So I'm gonna come over here. If you notice, I have these corners intersecting with each other in this sort of way. To simulate that effect, I'm just gonna kind of visualize it at the outer band and I'll just go around and go to each one after that. So let me eliminate these ones. 
And also this tail is sticking out right here, so I'm just gonna delete that. And then I'll do the same thing down here. Let me delete this one, this one, this one, so on and so forth. We'll get rid of those. And then finally this one over here. So I think that's that should cover it for the main part of the design. Now all we have to do is create these rounded caps. If you want to, I mean, I think this looks pretty good right now as it is, but if you want to add these little rounded caps on the end of them, just for the added effect, what you can do is you can just zoom in on this, grab your circle tool, and then create a circle that is the size of one grid box. So all you have to do is snap it and click and drag just like that, and there you go. And now we're going to convert that to curves. Click on the convert to, um, convert to curves over here. Grab your nodes. Well, the nodes tool should be enabled by default after that. Select these two nodes, and then we're going to break this path by selecting this button over here. Break curve. There we go. And now you can take this and just snap it on there like that. And now we have a rounded cap on top of that. And I'm going to hold option and click and drag to create a duplicate copy. Again, on Windows, that would be your alt key. There we go. And there we go. That would be another one. And I'll take this one and place it down here. I'll do the same thing. Hold the Option key, click and drag. And in order to snap the object, you'll have to let go of the Option key, otherwise it won't snap. But once you let go of Option, it'll snap. So let me do this as well. That's looking good. And let me, I'm gonna put, we're gonna need the four segments down here as well. So I'm just gonna grab these ones up here and option click and drag those to make a copy and then I will rotate these around. There we go, make it easy instead of having to do each one individually much quicker, there we go. And I'll do this again over here. Let me make a duplicate of these, rotate this around. Again, holding your shift key when you rotate those so that it rotates it according to the vertical axis. And then finally we have these ones over here. So let me make a copy of these ones over here And I will place them in there like that. And then over here, we should only need one, two, three. So I'm gonna take these three and copy them. And there we go. So there you go. This is just an example of how you can create the word design. You can use this method to create any word you want. You just have to try to visualize how you would construct those letters using these quadrants of a circle right here. And if you want this to function as a unit, what you could do now is first, what you wanna do is turn off snapping. We don't need that anymore. Select everything here. And now we're gonna merge it all together by going to layer, geometry, and selecting merge curves. And now this will function as a single unit. And if you come over here to the stroke panel, you may want to enable this option right here that says scale with object. If you don't enable that, you're gonna get this effect where the, where the lines stay the same size regardless of the size of the object, and you may or may not want that. To lock the aspect ratio there, you can just enable that option, and now you can size this however you want. And if you wanna change the color of the object, just change the stroke color. So come over here to your color tab, enable your stroke, and then just change the color to whatever you want. I think for my example in the thumbnail, I used white and I'll bring it off the canvas here so you can see how it looks. And you can also change the size of the stroke as well. If you notice the white on dark background doesn't, it looks kind of thick, so I'm gonna thin that out a little bit by taking the stroke tab and bringing that down. You can bring this down, you can bring it up, you can do whatever you want. And right about there looks pretty good. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.